Hello, and welcome to Old Toy, New Joy, the show where I share with you my previously enjoyed toys I purchased from online sources, thrift stores, and collector shows that once belonged to someone else. Well, I did go to a collector show just yesterday, and I found some pretty cool stuff, so I thought it'd be fun to feature that on today's episode of Old Toy, New Joy. We got some action figures, we got some trading cards, and we also got some really cool Star Wars bed sheets. So let's get started. So let's start with the bed sheets. I purchased a matching fitted sheet, top sheet, and pillowcase for $40. Uh, for this bib Return of the Jedi set of bed sheets. And the company Bib released two different bed sheet sets in 1983 for Return of the Jedi. This is the more colorful of the set. The other one had a lot of white in it. This one's got a lot of uh, browns and blues and some reds. And it's extremely colorful, showing all of the interesting and lovable characters featured in episode six, such as Grimorian Guards, Jabba's Palace, and Sail Barge, Imperial Guards, and of course, the lovable Ewoks. A couple years later, the Ewoks would have their own animated series, uh, and so would C-3PO and R2-D2 in droids. And I do think the success of Return of the Jedi was responsible for that. In the early 1980s, I myself as a child had Star Wars bedsheets. I had Empire Strikes Back, and they were not unlike this New Hope uh, pillowcase, which I featured in my Feeling Nostalgia uh, episode not too long ago. There, there were a lot of blues and grays in my set, and I used to use it as a backdrop when I played on my bed with my action figures and my Hot Wheels, and I had hours and hours of pure enjoyment playing on those bed sheets. I, I love those bed sheets and that's why I invested in these bed sheets because I think they're really cool. Some people might not like the idea of buying someone else's bed sheets, but they're in good shape, they're clean. I'm not going to use them to sleep on, but uh, you know, as a child, I definitely used them as a prop uh, when I played. And I picked up this 1974 Mego Star Trek Captain Kirk. Uh, for $25 and let's get a closer look at him. So here's my 1974 Mego 8 inch Captain Kirk along with my Spock which I featured in an earlier episode of Old Toy New Joy. I created this little diorama for them in honor of the classic TV series which only ran for three years beginning in 1966 that's right, a lot of people don't realize the original Star Trek television show only ran for three seasons. It actually was not received that well. The Nielsen ratings were always pretty low. Um, and uh, it finally succumbed to cancellation. And it wasn't until syndication that people really began to appreciate the show. And uh, I mentioned before there was an animated series with the voices of the original actors in the early 70s. But other than that, there was no more classic Star Trek. But of course, it became popular in syndication and reruns, and the rest is history. And yeah, my little diorama here is in honor of those Class M planets that uh, the search party or the the survey party, or whatever you want to call it, which usually consisted of Kirk and Spock, uh, Bones, a couple of red shirts, would beam down to a planet and check it out. The planet, of course, would have oxygen and nitrogen and fertile soil uh, suitable for humans to inhabit it. That term, Class M, planet, was an invention of the Star Trek television show creators. Um, so it's it's science fiction, but it's kind of neat. And of course, having planets that people could land on and walk around and breathe made filming easier for the show. 
so you didn't have to have these guys in astronaut suits with breathing apparatus. They could just kind of walk around and be themselves. But sometimes the trees and the rocks and the sky would be different colors, which is what I've done here, just for fun. Didn't spend too much time on it. Let's take a closer look at Captain Kirk. So he stands well. His uniform is in really nice condition. Uh, the Starfleet insignia, the foil is missing, but the underlayer, which is just a sort of a gray plastic, is still on his shirt. Often that has been torn off or fallen off over the years. Uh, the phaser has discoloration. Nonetheless, it's an original phaser. Hair paints pretty good. There were three head types for Kirk. Light skin, light skin with pink lips and dark skin. I believe this is the dark skin version, which is also the most common. And uh, yeah, I got him for $25 from the collector's show and I was happy with that because he's at least that on eBay plus the shipping. And uh, often he's more than that on eBay. so. I thought it'd be nice just to get him while he was there. And he looks like him too. If you have seen other episodes of Old Twin Joy, and I hope you have, you'll know that I'm a big vintage Incredible Hulk fan. Um, there weren't a ton of Incredible Hulk action figures in the 70s and 80s. This one's from 1990 uh, by Toy Biz as part of their rampaging, arm-crushing Hulk set. I picked this up for $20. Not not an amazing deal. That's pretty much the going rate on eBay anyways. Maybe a little bit less on eBay, although this one's in really good shape. But then you gotta pay the shipping and everything. So he was there. I liked the seller. I bought a lot of stuff from him before. Um, so I didn't mind paying $20 for this guy. He does have the little lever in his back. It moves his arms. He can smash. Hulk smash! Uh, he's in good shape. He's got his hair paint and his face paint, his eyebrows, a lot of that got rubbed off in the eyes over the years, so this one's in good shape. He's got his purple pants. I really like him, and uh, he'll go nice with my growing vintage collection of Hulk figures and memorabilia, such as my 1970s children's Dika dish set and my metal TV tray, not unlike the one I use as a child to eat my breakfast and lunch as I watch Saturday morning cartoons. All that good stuff. And I am slowly building a collection of vintage LJN Thundercats action figures. And I did feature the, most of the ones that I have on an episode of Old Toy New Joy. I purchased this snowman from Hook Mountain from 1985 for $10 yesterday. He also has a trigger on his back. I don't remember what his weapon was. I'm guessing it was a club or an axe. I'm not an expert in uh, Thundercats, and as I mentioned in my Thundercats ep uh, episode, I didn't watch the Thundercats. I, I don't know how it evaded me, because I was definitely watching cartoons and stuff and collecting toys when Thundercats was out. Um, but yeah, I, I wasn't really aware of it. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit rough. The face paint there. But it's okay, I've seen these in worse condition. And so now I have, oh, I think I have eight figures now. So we're getting there. This is from um, the first the first year, the first release of these figures. The ones in the next year are the ones that get a little more expensive and harder to find. And on to the trading cards. Mostly non-sport this time around. There was a seller I've purchased um, cards from before, mostly my 1971, 72, and 72, 73 tops basketball cards and some 50s and 60s hockey cards. He he always has a great dollar bin and he refreshed his dollar bin this time around. I spent quite a bit of time going through there and found these 1990 uh, OPG Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cards. Now, I did an episode a while back with Jilly Bean where I feature wax packs of cards and I did not open them and I think that left a lot of people wanting more. They wanted to see what was inside. 
So these are tops, but same same thing. Uh, this is what would have been inside. So now you know. Still not going to open up the pack, sorry. But we've got uh, a couple Raphaels. Just undercover. And Leonardo. Again, a dollar each. Just wanted to have some. And here's a 1978 Topps Superman. And in that wax pack episode, I had this wax pack of Superman cards. You know, I'm noticing these wax packs since I bought mine off of eBay for like, I don't know, $2, $3, $4 each. They tripled, quadrupled in price on eBay. And I'm also seeing at collector shows, they're quite expensive. So I don't know what happened, but I think I purchased at the right time because now I would not be able to pay what I paid before. But here's a Superman cart. So now we know what that wax pack had inside. Cards that look like this. There's Christopher Reeve, my favorite Superman, of course, because he was a Superman of my childhood. And in that bin were also some 1985 OPG WWF cards. And I did feature 1987 Tops WWF cards. Uh, in an episode of Ultimate to Enjoy, but I didn't have any of the 1985s, aside from Hulk Hogan's rookie card. Now I have these guys, so we've got a couple of Tony Atlases. That's a nice colorful back. The Magnificent Morocco and British Bulldog Davy Boy Smith. I have LJ and wrestling figures for both of those. And if you like wrestling and you're into old wrestling figures, please check out my LJN episodes and my Hasbro wrestling figure episode. And then uh, Big John Stud with Bobby the Brain Heenan, and I have LJ and figures for both of those gentlemen as well. Very recently, I featured my small vintage collection of basketball cards. So I was excited to find this Larry Bird um, in a 1989-90 Fleer. Because I didn't have a Larry Bird. If you can believe that. All-time greatest Celtic. In my opinion, anyways, I think the record books would agree. Although Jason uh, Tatum just uh, scored the highest year average. I think he was around 30.2 points a season. Larry Bird fell just short of 30, but we still have to wait and see what Tatum can do for the rest of his career. And 1975-76 tops Ralph Simpson, because I talked about the 70s and the American Basketball Association for which Simpson played. It's, it's a very dark card. It's hard to see, but I, I love those 70s cards. Very cool. And there's a nice look of that red, white, and blue ball that the American Basketball Association was known for. I think that ball was a little bit smaller than the regulation NBA ball as well. And you'll notice that, if you can see, there are three-point stats. There still weren't three-point um, stats in the NBA because he didn't get three points for a shot beyond the arc until about 1979 in the NBA. And then I was delighted to find a whole bunch of 1954 Topps World on Wheels cards of classic cars. And he had a ton of them. I, I wasn't looking to spend all my money on these cards. So I just picked nine that I could fit in a sheet um, of the classic ones from the early 1900s. And I did do an episode on my classic die-cast car collection and talked about the old cars and how Jilly Bean is really into the old Model Ts and that. And we go to uh, car shows sometimes to look at the old cars. So I picked nine of my favorites. So we have a 1906 Cadillac and a 1904 Knox Surrey. A 1906 Adams Farewell and an 1899 Locomobile. A 1911 Stanley Steamer and a 1911 Panel Delivery Truck. A 1911 Pierce Arrow and a 1905 Runabout. 
So thank you for tuning in today on Old Toy New Joy and allowing me to share my latest collector's show haul. If you like the video, please like the video and we will keep them coming. In the meantime, I do encourage you to visit other episodes of Old Toy New Joy. You may find something that interests you, something that sparks a memory, something that reminds you that it's fun to collect and it's healthy and good to have a hobby. I discuss things such as Transformers, G.I. Joe, Star Wars, Thundercats, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Superpowers, He-Man, Wrestling Figures, Hot Wheels, Comics, Pogs, and so much more. Until next time, this is your Toy Whisperer saying farewell and happy hunting. From Old Toy, New Joy. <laughs>